So with the EM27 going bzzz, and with the Mega Tracker not not receiving, but it is receiving on a different frequency, we'd better move on to a set which we should be able to fix. Though the owner of this was a member of my radio club. He tells me this has got all kinds of bizarre modifications. So we'll just move some tat out of the way. We'll better move on to this. It's a York JCB863. So there shouldn't be any surprises, but one of the things he says apparently seems to have happened to it, it's got some kind of variable power some kind. I won't bother testing the radio before opening it up, seeing if we can reverse whatever's happened. I'll probably end up taking the bottom off. Oh my goodness. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What's happened to that? This is an instance where we are going to have to plug it in. It's got this commercial extra board. Oh my goodness. I take a nice radio and ruin it. Well, I have exactly 15 minutes and whether or not we can move back onto this further today See, most people have had 15 minutes. They'd sit and watch the telly for 15 minutes, but there's no television here. So it doesn't. It means you're not wasting time. I actually went to the barbers today. and see me about twice a year. <laughs> Mind you, there's less hair every time I go. All right, 13.8 volts. What happens when we switch it on? It comes on. What happens when we press transmit? Uh, it helps if I plug the test equipment in. Well, I've got this, this safety uh, lights come on. 
on the test set. That's not good. That means it's kicking out so much interference that it's not good. So at the moment, this radio is doing one watt. So if you put it into normal, it's doing 4.4 .4 watts and it's feeding back on itself. So that's not good. So is, uh, let's put my walkie talkie on. And we'll also just look at the deviation. Wallet, wallet says one and a half, which is probably about true. Let's listen to it on the walkie talkie. Testing one, two, testing one, two. So it's transmitting audio. What happens when we turn up and down mic gain? One, two, 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 one, two. So mic gain is doing mic gain. But it's also, what else? No. So what happens when we turn dimmer? Well, nothing dims. And what happens when we put it on low power and also turn dimmer? Nothing you'd expect. Channel 9 is channel 19. We can soon remedy that. That's what those diodes will be on the top. Is RF gain? RF gain. plug a speaker in. Oh, let's see if PA is P it really is PA. Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two. I am a robot. That sounds great, doesn't it? One, two, one, two, one, two, one. back into CV when I find the right switch let's put S9 on the test set meter doesn't read anything does the meter read anything on transmit? yes it does but it doesn't, receive, doesn't on receive It doesn't do RF gain doesn't do anything. Anyway, it's all got to come out. What's this extra board though at the back? I'm sure I've seen this extra board when I've chopped up AM sets. So those wires Well, I know what we've not played with. High, medium and low. No, they don't do high, medium and low, do they? 
two arms in transmit. Four point four watts, four point four watts, four point four watts. Fix the meter, look. On transmit, if you turn the dimmer, it varies the meter. Why? It doesn't vary the power, it very, just varies the meter. The meter that no longer does anything on receive. Testing one two, testing one two, testing one two. I don't, I give up, I really do. I just hope I can turn it back into a real set. Best thing to do, cut that. Perhaps they thought putting a 741 in this was a better method of speech processing than the existing speech processing, which is the chip at the back there, eight pin double thingy, whatever it is. Right, so that's piece of junk one. Piece of junk two. Done a really good job putting this board in. PTSR 01 something COX PTSR 01 something COX I'm, I'm sure I've seen these on AM sets as we've scrapped them I thought it was uh, like an SWR meter board is that what they've tried to do has this got some kind of hidden built in SWR meter that I don't know about Which is something built in SBR means it was specifically um, not allowed under 2781 because the diodes in them um, do emit interference. Right, we'll see if we can make anything of this on the next session. So I looked up the board reference and it's exactly what I suspected. There was a, found something online, it was an American High Gain 3 and it's supported this board just like this and it has an SWR position so it's an SWR board so that's got to come out I don't know what people do all this for and it doesn't you know it's not like it worked properly in this set so I'll get the front off and then we can start hopefully rewiring it and turning it back into a real set Right, I've put some one or two obvious things back. 
right we've got the output of the transmitter actually going uh, into the socket um, taking all the daft wires off which were extra what I'm going to now have to do is to get one of our own York H63's out and by far the quickest way rather than struggle with circuit diagrams is to just look at what's happened because there's there's been the channel 19 modification instead of channel 9 there's been that which I think I've reversed in its entirety and then there is this um, microphone preamplifier of course they've repurposed quite a number of the switches so that's what we've got to look at the wiring at. And I did notice the dimmer, I think, is now... I think the dimmer had become um, set full-scale deflection for the SWR meter. Right, folks, we're back onto this. It's Friday. We've also started an HMV Stereo Master 2026. I'd like to have the first part of that published later today. Um, so... We started this about three days ago. This is the York 863, which has been extensively modified. And I've spent four, four yes, I have, uh, 45 minute sessions, so that's two lots of 90 minutes, an hour and a half, demodifying it. No, that's three hours. Can't even add up. What we have here in our storage facility is a York 863 which is a no hoper with the front removed but is complete it enables me to use it to put wiring back so there we go well it could be a hoper if you had a case and some other parts so we now have this hopefully rewired such that it doesn't have a built-in SWR meter like it did have re uh, removed from an AM radio uh, which is here that was the bit which went down there so that can go in the bin this isn't approved for that kind of thing you'll notice 2781 sets don't have built-in SWR mark meters uh, some bases do I didn't think they were supposed to be incorporated at all, but uh, I've probably read an earlier draft of the rules. Right, so we're going to power this up, and you know what, I've sat down here already and everything. All the equipment warmed up, and I've overlooked the fact that the Cybernet standard mic we have... Oh, well, I used... Oh, it's a Uni Ace. Um... He's over on Mr. Chippy's bench in another room where he's working on that um, uh, CB1100 unusual set. Um, he's got to the stage where he's, um, we found ours, pulled that back out of storage. The one we bought was converted to 10 metres. So because we've got the customer set, we can see what they've done. And it's actually quite straightforward to put it back to standard. So... Uh, it's a matter of now of putting some diodes in the right place. So hopefully we'll get our one working. And when we get our one working, we can do a voltage comparison to see why the customer's one is doing receive in hyperspace. Goodness knows what it's receiving, but it's nowhere near 27 megs. Right, that's our mic back. So... Although the VCO probably hasn't been fiddled with because it wasn't a naughty channel modification, it was just a silly accessories modification. Not sure why they'd put that um, there, which is, uh, well, it looks to me like it's a, another microphone preamp when it's already got a jolly good one. Bizarre. So, to recap the put an SWR meter in they've repurposed the high medium low tone switch to become the SWR forward and reverse the dimmer control had become the set um, full scale deflection on the meter but the receive meter no longer works so it did transmit meter it did SWR and it, then it didn't do receive. I think PA's been left alone. 
channel nine's become 19 that should be straightforward so we've had to recommission the tone switch and actually fit brand new capacitors which do the tonal changes on that so i may have missed things i don't recall i haven't put the channel nine back i've put the digits back but i haven't put the the actual channel nine so if they got that right and it was doing 19 it'll still be doing 19 but displaying nine that needs sorting we've put the display board back and the dimmer now works on the display as it should which is good and pleased right um we're going to use to do the tune up we're going to use the re um the redone resized version of uh, the rotel instructions from the service manual because the way mike's done this is so much clearer than in the service manual so i've, I've just remembered mike anyway because we've just sent some connectors out to him so where's our test meter it's here so we're going to do the vco so i've no reason to do this but i may as well for completeness the time taken so far on this is possibly beyond what it's worth so we'll put our earth to that strap across there because the shot is floating on these switch is set on 13.8 volts we've powered up we're on channel 20 but we want to be on a different channel so jet my thing is channel 40 on these sets there we go channel 40 change glasses and far side of resistor 4 is the test point test point 1 Why am I getting nothing? What on earth is happening with the meter? Oh, our yellow lead is open circuit. Sometimes. They're pretty crummy, aren't they, the way these are made? Right. So we should have. We start with receive. Channel 40. We should have 4 volts plus or minus 0 0.1. So we have got that. And put that into the camera. We'll just give it the tiniest little twaggle wrong way how about that and then we're going to transmit and once again we should have four volts I'm just trying to blow his PA up we haven't got an aerial connected I'll just connect that to the test gear and that's something we know it did do was transmit I'm hoping we're on low power because otherwise it's only doing 0.1 of a watt. It was doing 4.4, if you remember before, and we'll see why it's doing 4.4 when we get there. So the red trimmer, I'm not showing this, am I, because I'm having to hold the PTT. Three point nine five. let go. 4 volts to receive, 3.96 times eight. Right, so I think we'll now get a sheet and we'll start filling in what this set's doing. So 
So I started our HMV 2026, opened the lid to discover the record player platter that so distorted with, um, oh, I suppose the rubber um, perishers that um, it was unusable. So I had a word with Andy from Vintage Electronics at Stockport and he's got one in stock. So we've uh, done a deal on that. So, um, I don't know what the date is today. Um, let's put down the 15th for a laugh. Get to the serial number without. 202. 07056 so as it came in I remember it was doing 4.4 watts and uh, whatever it's doing now on low power is what it's doing now so it's difficult to do a before and after because of the um, What, what's happened to the set? VCO was 4.15 plus 4 and it's now 4 plus 4 so it didn't need doing but we've done it. Just check on channel 1 that it's within the parameters that we're expecting. So on channel 1 we're supposed to have 1.8 to 2.5 on transmit. And on receive we're supposed to have 1.9 to 2.5. So absolutely bob on as they would say back in Yorkshire good well, that was one thing that wasn't messed with so if we go into the transmitter next better go back to channel four, uh, 20 or we will be in trouble just check that TX light works it does Let's see what switches is, is where. I'll tell you what, we'll put that on without tightening it as a temporary measure. Oh, my tone switch works. Woo! There we go. So it's pegging the needle at 3 watts. do 4.3 today power consumption is 1.189 amps channel 1 he's doing 4.4 channel 40 He's doing 3.5. See, that's, this is what happens. They, by unbalancing it, they've got more power on some channels. And, you know, <laughs> going 4 watts over the legal limit, 0.4 over a watt over the legal limit, he's not even going to get you 10, 10 yards more range. Radio doesn't work like that. Just show you the dimmer. I'm proud of that. It's probably taken about an hour to restore that. <laughs> right here we go. Um, I tell you what we'll do. We'll put the radio on frequency because the test gear has been on long enough. We'll just jot down where that was because I'm told to it. 
I mean, it's neither here nor there. It's 27. Oh, we're on channel 40 again. I'm glad I saw that. Twenty-seven seven nine one one seven. I mean, it's on frequency, so twenty-seven seven nine one one seven. So we're just with the slightest adjustment, we'll bring that up to twenty-seven seven nine one two five. If it'll go, I think we'll leave it there. Just very very slightly high because they drop with age. So we'll look at deviation. Wow, it says 1.6, and it's probably 2.5 as this meter red, right? I'll put 1.6, and we'll, we'll verify it with the test set behind me. I want this onto the centre position. I'll tell you what, we'll do this now so that it's out of my. Look how mangled up as it's been messed with time and time again. So I'm just going to plug into the test set behind me. We'll get the deviation done with. And then I'm not changing benches. Absolutely spot on. So, although I've adjusted this one, the other one is spot on. Good. So, 2.2 to a peak of 2.5 kilohertz. Oh, actually done something it didn't need adjusting but that will have made a difference um, low power let's just go through that one if I can find it on the front panel that front power real estate it's actually one watt right so now we'll go through the transmitter so we're on channel 20 center of the peak it's a matter of kind of going either either way and seeing where the center of that peak is I'm not going to we haven't done the receiver test yet uh, you know as it came so I'm not going to mess with that it's apart from putting it on frequency but we always set the signal generator to what the radio is really on um, so that even if it's off frequency we're giving the same correct result so we've got to now peak these and peak them rap quite rapidly because the heat sink and so on it can't really support much above 4 watts so it's previously been asked to do 4.4 .4, hasn't it on the, on the lower channels so once kind of peak these three quickly so we've got a peak there we've got a peak there and we've now got a peak there I'm going to go through them again the good news is that none of these cores have kind of melted which can happen if they're transmitted on for a prolonged period once again we're going to just touch that one for the pre-driver so we're now at 4.7 watts so if we go back to the destructions just for those of you who don't see every one of the videos we do so 
L4 is clockwise for 4.4 watts and then L9 is anti-clockwise for 3.8 so L4 is this yellow one so clockwise for 4.4 watts so at the moment we're doing 4.7 so it's lowering the power and there we are at 4.4 then this green one the manual says 3.8 watts where we're allowed 4 watts because the manufacturer needs these to get through customs if spot checked all radios are set low otherwise it'd be batch um, rejected so there we are bob on the four watts so you're getting everything you're entitled to remember this is a commercial test set so my four watts could equal 70 target watts very easily right so this is what the government inspectors would go by real watts so we're absolutely spot on four watts on channel one and we're absolutely spot on on channel 40 now it's not often they balance that well. The other thing I pointed out earlier, I've got the danger light coming on on my test set before, it's telling me that the spurious emissions were greater than acceptable. We'd have had to go onto the spectrum analyzer, but I've got rid of the SWR board and that fault's gone. So. You know, it may have been getting 4.4 watts, but it wasn't all going out of the spout. It was a lot of that was interference. So, uh, low power, time to do that. So, we'll pop it onto low power once again, put the test set onto low power, and see whether we can set up 400 milliwatts. It's a little bit, um, what's the word? Jerky these do tend to this that's a that doesn't look like being tilted that one 400 milliwatts there's a 10 db attenuator remember so it's at 110 um back to full power let's see what current we're consuming 1.215 that surprises me there you are that's what it is normally when it's tuned magnificently it draws less current so the next thing i should have taken the reading of the s meter but because it was connected to this daft swr circuit i'll write down that it was uh, full scale deflection f s d and before it was not working Uh, on the uh, S meter because of the daft SWR thing they put in. And it hadn't failed, there was actually no wiring. So we'll set the RF meter. So we now know that when connected to a dummy load, which is the only way to measure the power, it now reads four. But never worry when you key up and you only get two and you get full scale deflection, it doesn't mean you're doing less or more power, because it's only relevant when it's on a dummy load. So, switches, switches, Demodified parts, parts, demodified sockets. Uh, did we check PA? Let's just check PA. If mic gain works, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Mic gain now works because that's another thing they'd done in. I'm glad they hadn't messed about with the PA switch, it's a lot of wiring. So that brings us to receive. So let's see what it's doing. I'll make sure RF gains up.
and we'll plug the test equipment speaker in. And on the signal generator, we'll put 2779125. I haven't checked whether channel 9 is still doing 19 or not, or whether it ever did do 19. Because I can't see any change of wiring on that. There we go. So I can hear that, but it's a, a bit quiet since I did the attenuated speak, which we will reverse one day. I've just caught the signal generator. It's the next knob up to the attenuator, and I catch it. Right. So we'll just look at where it is at the moment. So remember, I've not altered the receiver. It looks to be very good. 0.25. It's normally only a band 10 five stars that do this. 0.21. So unless the detector out is out and we're getting a false reading, 0.75. Let's do the squelch. Full squash I like to be a hundred microvolts. Actually not far off that. Two hundred and seventy microvolts. So there isn't a hard and fast rule on this, it's just experience that S9 tends to be the biggest thing you really need to be squashing out. Um turn that down when I can find it. Let's find the sensitivity. Uh, from not put a uh, one point eight could do with being better than that. So hopefully, when I adjust that to up, whether the receiver is slightly out, it really could do with being under one point four. Right. So back to the receiver. Put the oscilloscope on. Let's have a look at S nine on the oscilloscope. So we'll just do the detector. Has it been fiddled with or not? It's spot on. Spot on right. Turn that off. Go back to sinad meter. I have to go to a lower scale than usual because the set's so good. No change. Hang on a minute, we've got the extra. Someone's put the extra, extra coil in like you get in the base station. What well, done? Smashed up a base station to get the coil out. This has got a broken core, let's hope it moves. Tell you what, it doesn't, we've just improved it. Right, we'll go for a bigger signal now for the IFs. All of those were very slightly out. Right, let's see if we can get a new reading. Have I fixed it worse? But sometimes it comes out looking worse. No. 
because it's 0 0.2. Now, this is where I have to change scales and then I'll lose some accuracy. See, I'm still getting 2.1. So you can see that can't be right because that's already to point two. So uh, we'll just say it's the same. It could be 1.8. Go back to the normal scale and 20 will now have altered. Well, it's 0.59. So that squelch, because the IFs were slightly out, very, very slightly out, will now be better. So once again, I'll put 100 microvolts. I will put the squelch to full, and I want the squelch to open with that level of signal. Let's go to the attenuator. There we go. So it's now opening at 100 microvolts. So let's go to a speaker we can hear, because we don't need to have the instruments on anymore. And this is actually the best receiving York 863 I remember ever having had. We had that York 861 from uh, our mystery benefactor Alan which was a repair of his and went back to him. Uh, that was the best ever York 861 and I'm talking about the best ever in 40 years of doing this. I said to him you'll never get a better uh, you'll never get a better receiver than this. Right, um, let's see where we are with this. Switch it off, set the squelch, and now we'll switch the signal generator back on out of standby. It's parked at 0.3 of a microvolt. Nothing. It's now 1.3, so I've got it under the 1.4. Now, if I was really, really careful with the squelch control, let's do it once again. Yeah, I've really been... Yeah, we can get it to come in at point 0.3. But you want to be able to just turn the knob, don't you? Not be kind of hovering just to get it just so. So I'm just trying to prove that the thing is working properly. So the thing that wasn't working properly was the S-meter. And all the wiring had been removed. So now we have the wiring back. And we should be able to set S9. Just like that. So, channel 9. Is it channel 9 or is it 19? Let's go to the frequency counter. So if we go to channel 20, I'll tell you what, we'll do this in low power. 27.79129 would supposed to be. So if we put it on 19, it should be 27.78125. So let's press the channel 9 switch, which was converted to channel 19 switch. It is. It's still... It's still doing channel 9. Now, I hadn't altered the wiring. So what has happened here, because, as I understood it, without getting all the data out, pin 9, believe it or not, is the channel 9 switch. And if we look at our sample, it's always possible that this one had been messed with and turned to 19 as well. I'll tell you what, we've got a, a really scrap Harrier here. Oh, they don't have channel 9 switch, do they? Or do they? I mean, that's, you can see why that's scrap, can't you? And apart from the fact the transmitter's uh, knackered. No, they don't have that. We're going to have to look at the circuit diagram to see what uh, happens. OK, so I've been back to the computer. And what we've got is the circuit here. Let's put
put the radio flat. So from the channel 9 switch, this connection goes to pin 9. See how well thought out Sanyo were, the channel 9 um, pin is the channel 9 switch. Uh, one of the things about this chip is that, the idea, as you know, the channel selector switch does binary code a decimal on these six data lines and there's a truth table available in some of the service manuals and certainly with the data sheet for the LC7137 which says that you know 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 equals whatever and to get those 40 channels a double locked ROM the idea being if you put in a fake uh, whereas it, you know general purpose um, synthesizer chip like used in a DNT you can put in uh, an unassigned uh, BCD code and get channels other than what's legal you see so that this is double locked and the idea is that if you put in a code which is not one of the 40 channels then the thing assumes emergency and goes to channel 9. Um, one, this is one of the clever things about this chip was that in an emergency you've got to appreciate CB would be more serious uh, before mobile phones uh, if you had a car crash and the front was smashed off the radio if it was going to work at all even if the channel selector switch had been smashed away from the board this chip would assume emergency and go to channel 9 you wouldn't know it because the front was smashed off but it would be doing that inside so clever little bit of design work now the next pin up when I come to look at the data sheet so pin 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, pin 9 is the channel 9 um, pin. And ch instant channel 19 is on the next pin, pin 8. That's why I needed to just check it out. So let's see what's happened to pin 8. Because surely that must now be the channel 9 pin. So of course it's all under that switch there. So it's all going to have to have happened on this side. So if we count the pins... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight has a wire on it. It should be on nine. Well, that's interesting. So our test one here has had the same thing done to it, hasn't it? So the best thing to do here, no wonder I didn't get it back, it should be there. See, we have these samples, and and that can happen. So we'll remove that from there and put it on there. And you know what? That should be it. I'll just put some screws back in this. <laughs> How's that for faith? Right, um, power back on. So now channel 9 is channel 9. So just to show you, we'll put channel 9 on the manual channel selector 68125, go to channel 9. 68125. So that's the only thing I'd overlooked. Whether or not this speech processor thing <laughs> uh, 
uh, has had anything done to it is another matter. I'll have to go and get my walkie-talkie back. Uh, and that is all there is to do. Let's put some knobs back on it. Certainly had some use this set. Are we back on normal? Yeah. Let's go to channel 20. Stick that somewhere. I'm sure the owner of this will probably respray these knobs. I mean, it's had years of use, hasn't it? And, it, and it's, uh, and despite all that that's happened to it, I know I put a lot of time into it, but it's still come up a treat. Three different tone positions. So I'm going to get my walkie-talkie back. It's on Mr. Chippy's bench while he's. Uh, fiddling about that CB1100 uh, strange set mega uh, tracker and uh, I'll come back and we'll just finish this video off right so we've got that radio testing one two testing one two Let's see whether that clear normal is actually white or anything one two one two one two one two Testing one two one two one two one two one two one one two one two one two one two one two it's hard to tell. It's one of those things that um, is pretty useless. You basically have a capacitor and it's switched out. Uh, to not happen. Uh, if the capacitor is missing, it sounds very nasal, which is the clear position. So, yeah, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Good. Well, that's been an absolute um, horror, but it's worked out to be one of the better, one of the best York 863s. And conveniently, somebody's put G and Y for green and yellow. It's going to take me as long to put these tags back on as doing the set. There we go. Let's put those other screws in. So the owner was coming personally on Saturday, but he's uh, otherwise committed. He's one of the members of the Scars Radio Club. So I do get to see him every fortnight. But he has a collection of CBs, even though he's been a Class A amateur forever. So I'm really pleased that I've been able to turn this from a play toy back into a high quality radio and then we discover that it turns out to be one of the best ever sets we've ever had for the York 863. I said before I, I don't never knew why and I still don't know why but the Yorks don't tend to work as well as the Rotels and the Rotels don't work as well as the Binatone or the Harvard 420M or the Fidelity 2000 with its bigger speaker but there you are I'll tell you what we haven't done for ages we haven't had a Bantone Speedway now the um, Cybernet 134 basic set with a tiny meter
like the SMC Oscar one always is a fantastic working set but it has that tiny meter right we're all back together I didn't know we'd ever get it to this point I'm going to switch the test gear off there'll be a scratchy corner test later let's just plug it in and see where this super sensitive set actually picks up anything oh I'll just check its own speaker yeah one nano roger helps if we're in one nano roger full power nothing One nano roger. So we know this is getting out for 35 miles in our best direction. There's nobody on. It's half past 10 in the morning. There's one chap on channel 37 having a sensible conversation. Don't see beers get up yet. <laughs> right, there we go. So I hope you found that interesting and to get a worthwhile set back in the land of the living. York 863 from 1981 using the Cybernet 134 chassis. Thank you for watching.